Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Comms Prepper and in this video I'd like to talk about test equipment. For those of you just getting into the amateur radio hobby or looking to establish an emergency communications plan for yourself or part of a prepper group or have maintenance responsibilities for a ham radio club station and its equipment or a prepper group and its equipment the time's going to come when you're going to have to start getting some test equipment to help maintain that equipment. And the best advice I can give about test equipment is to be patient. If you look at some of the prices of test equipment online new, the sticker shock could give you a stroke. Some of the stuff is really, really expensive. So everything you see up here is stuff that I bought used, but I was very patient and I waited for it. Waited for the right deal on Craigslist or eBay. And it takes a little while to start getting the few pieces that you need, but if you're patient, deals will come along and you'll find what you need. I think when you're first starting out in amateur radio, the very first piece of test equipment you're going to need is a multimeter. And my favorite multimeter is the multimeter I was trained on in the Air Force, and that's a Simpson 260 multimeter up there. It's an old-fashioned analog meter, but I'm kind of like a dinosaur, so I like analog test equipment. It's a good multimeter. It's very rugged. And I use this meter all the time here and take it out to the retreat location and it has served me well for several years now and I picked this up used on eBay got a really good deal on it but again I was patient and I waited the second piece of test equipment you're gonna want if you have maintenance responsibilities especially in a workshop type environment is a bench power supply I got this LG power supply used on Craigslist it goes up to 30 volts it has current limiting right now I have it set for 13.8 volts it's rocking a little bit because I hit the knob and this is perfect for working on things on the bench handheld radios which sometimes you have to turn down to I think 8 volts or when you're building little kits like when I'm working on repeater controller cards I can power that equipment up with some alligator clips and work on things on the bench another really nice piece of test equipment to have is an antenna analyzer. Here's an MFJ 259B antenna analyzer. I got that off of eBay used. I waited a long time to get that. Uh, it was missing a back cover, but I was able to get another one. This works really well. It's kind of big, but it's good for when you're making antennas or want to test antennas, especially in a retreat group or a prepper group or a ham radio club when you're going over to somebody else's place to troubleshoot their equipment. They got a radio set up and they can't connect with anybody or communicate first thing you want to do of course is check for voltage the meter and make sure their antenna is okay another really neat piece of test equipment to have is a frequency counter I don't use this so much anymore because I have a spectrum analyzer now but if you have a lot of people showing up let's say they have programmable radios like this Kenwood radio where it just says channel one two three four etc you can transmit on this radio next to this frequency counter don't connect it directly but hold it next to it a couple feet away and the frequency will pop up in the display and you'll know what that frequency is. The most recent piece of test equipment that I acquired and what kind of motivated me to make this video was this 20 megahertz oscilloscope. It's been a while that I needed an oscilloscope but I didn't need it enough to go out and hunt one down but this one came along here locally a couple weeks ago for 50 bucks on Craigslist. I went I took a shot at it I picked it up for 50 bucks and took it to a local calibration company and went to pick it up today it passed calibration everything works well on it so I got hundred and forty dollars in this oscilloscope and if I wanted to buy an equivalent new oscilloscope now it would probably be three hundred and fifty to four hundred dollars and it would probably be a digital oscilloscope I really prefer the old green CRT screen I just I like analog stuff advice I would give for buying used test equipment especially with Craigslist is pick someplace neutral to go make the buy a 7-eleven or a parking lot at a shopping center if it doesn't feel right take off another deal will come up later uh, nothing's worth getting hurt or getting robbed over If it doesn't feel right take off also on used equipment especially equipment that has vents in it to let air through for cooling I never bring that type of equipment directly into the house I had a friend who bought a television set it up on his entertainment center in his living room and cockroaches started running out of the television so if I buy a piece of used equipment I'll take the equipment put it in a kitchen trash bag zip tie it at the top I take it to the shed open it up hit it with compressed air make sure there's nothing hiding inside 
then if it's okay I'll bring it into the house and check it out so just a short video to talk about test equipment if you're getting into the hobby or setting up a prepper emergency communications plan the time will come when you'll start to have to get some test equipment and don't discount the used stuff there are deals out there if you're patient and as always thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel this has been the comms prepper with a video on used test equipment to support your emergency communications plan thanks for watching guys